Welcome to Prana Pause Yoga. My name is Pause. Today we have an all standing class. We'll begin with some warm ups and then we'll move into six postures that are great for all beginners to learn. This practice will be perfect for anyone who has difficulty getting up and down from the mat or for any beginner or advanced practitioner who wants a review of six of the fundamental postures of yoga. To begin, ground down into the feet. Shift the weight forward into the toes and then backwards into the heels. Keeping a soft bend in the knees, shift the weight forward and back just a couple times. And then shift the weight to the outer edges of the feet and then press down with the inside edge. Rock side to side, pinky edge to big toe edge. And then coming back with all the feet touching the mat, begin to press down with all four sides at the same time. When you do this, it can bring engagement into the legs making the calves become firm and the thighs become stabilized. Keeping this engagement throughout the legs, engage the core as though wrapping the corset around your belly, draw the navel in towards the spine. Give the shoulders a big circle forward and up, back and down and let the shoulder blades rest slightly back and slightly down. Now lengthen through the crown of the head, reaching the tips of the ears towards the ceiling, finding engagement through the entire body. On an inhale, reach the fingertips out to the sides. You can turn palms up at shoulder height and reach the palms together overhead. Exhale the arms out to the side and turning palms down. Reach the fingertips down towards the mat. Once again, inhale to reach out and up. Reaching palms together overhead and then exhale the arms out and down. Take three more breaths here, inhaling arms up. And exhaling out and down. Finding the pace of your own breath. Flow for these next two breaths. And then finally, exhaling all the way down to the sides. Let's bring a bit of movement into the legs now. We'll twist side to side, letting the arms come out like helicopter wings. You can let the gaze extend over the back shoulder as you come to each side. You might even lift the heel of the trailing leg off the mat to gain a bit more range of motion. And then gently let this movement slow and begin to find your way back to our starting position. Stepping the feet about hip distance apart. Once again, press down into the feet, engage through the legs and the core. Let the shoulder blades reach together and down and lengthen through the crown of the head. Take a deep breath in and reach the arms forward and up, coming to a wide V. Continue to engage through the legs, the core, and the arms, lengthening from the heels through the crown of the head. If this V position isn't comfortable for the arms, we have many options. You could clasp the opposite elbows. You can bend at the elbows and come to cactus arms. Or if you have a strap nearby, you can take a strap between the hands. Keep 
breathing deeply. We call this the mountain posture. It is a stable and grounded posture. One of the fundamental postures of yoga. It has been said that all the yoga postures can be formed from this one. Take one more deep breath in and then exhale the arms out to the sides and down. Fingertips reach towards the mat. Take a nice deep breath in, lengthening through the crown of the head. And as you exhale, reach the arms forward and sit the hips back. We'll bend at the knees. I'll turn so you can see what I'm doing from the side. Stay just where you are. So once again, reaching the arms forward, we sit the hips back, bringing a deep bend into the knees, working to lengthen through the back of the body, reaching the crown of the head away from the pelvis, opening up through the shoulders. If you find your arms are reaching more out and you're curved over, try opening up to cactus arms. This can open some space in the front of the chest. On your next inhale, press into the heels to rise all the way up to standing. And then on your exhale, sink back down. We call this chair posture, Utkatasana. One more time here, inhale, lifting all the way up, pressing through the heels, heels lengthening through the crown and the fingertips. And then exhale, sink to chair. One more time here, rising all the way up. We'll stay lifted this time. Exhale the arms out to the side and down. Fingertips reach towards the mat. On your next inhale, reach the arms forward and up once again. We have the same options here, so we can clasp opposite elbows, come to a wide V, grab a strap in the hands, or if it's comfortable for the shoulders, interlace the fingers and reach through the pointer fingers for steeple position. Pressing down into the heels, find that engagement in the legs once again, through the core, Reach the crown of the head and the fingertips up towards the sky. Take a deep breath in as you reach. And as you exhale, shift the hips to the right. Take a couple deep breaths here. Lengthening through the fingertips up towards the sky before arcing over towards the left. So rather than coming into a side bend here, we want to think about a parallel line on either side of the waist. So we want long lines of stretch from the hip all the way through the shoulders, all the way out through the fingertips. So if you notice that your one side is a bit shorter than the other, think about lengthening through both sides of the waist equally. We call this posture half moon, Ardha Chandrasana. You may be familiar with this name from a different tradition. A lot of the names in yoga are called different things in different traditions. So there's no right or wrong. This is just how I was taught. You may have learned it differently. One more deep breath here. And then exhale back through center. Let's release the hands, let the arms come down to the sides, turning palms down at shoulder height. We give a little shake out here. And then coming back to stillness, grounding down into the feet, 
engaging the legs, the core, drawing shoulder blades together and back, and then inhale the arms forward and up. Coming back to your hand position or elbow position for the, that you used on the last side, reaching through the fingertips or through the elbow points, lengthen the crown towards the sky, deep breath in and then exhale, shift the hips to the left. We want to make sure that we're not twisting here, so I'll show from the side. We want to keep the hips and the shoulders parallel in one straight line. And then we'll keep lifting through the fingertips and on an exhale, arc over towards the right side. Working to keep the hips and shoulders parallel. I'll turn back to the front view. So once again, if you notice that you're arcing over a big side bend and one side of the body is more lengthened than the other, See if you can lengthen through that opposite side as well. Hips to shoulders to fingertips. Long line stretch. Let's take two more breaths here. Deep breath in. And a deep exhale. And on your next exhale, we'll bring the hips and the shoulders back to center. Release the fingertips and float the arms down. Let the hands come to the belly, maybe one hand to the heart. See if you can feel anything churning inside of you. Is your energy flowing differently than it was when we started practice? Take a deep breath in and then release the hands down by the sides. Bring the feet a little bit closer together. For this next posture, it might help to bring the hands to the crest of the hips. We'll begin by pressing firmly down into the left foot and shift the weight over onto the left side. Keep a soft bend in the left knee. And begin to come up onto the ball of the right foot. If this is okay for you, turn the knee out the right knee points out to the right side and draw the sole of the right foot in towards the angle of the left foot. This is a great place to stay. We've got a kickstand here. We're working on our balance. If you want to take it a bit further, you can draw that foot up to the calf and keep pressing down into the standing leg, lengthening through the crown of the head. You may want to come to a wall or take a step off of your yoga mat, which can help with balance. If this position is comfortable and your balance is okay there, you could give yourself an assist to lift the foot above the left knee. We never want to put pressure directly on the side of the knee. And once you've found your working position, release the hands down to the sides and inhale the arms forward and up, growing your branches for tree posture, Vrikshasana. Remembering that not all trees are stationary. We have windy trees that sometimes fall and sometimes flow in the movement. So the wavering and sometimes stepping out of the posture is part of the journey. When you're ready, release the arms. You can 
either bring the hands to the hips or to the side of the body and gently release the foot. Bring the knee back to center and step down, weight on both feet. Release the hands for a moment and feel the flow of energy. Is anything moving within you? Perhaps a transfer from one side of the body to the other. For the next side, bring the hands back to the crest of the hips, if that's what you chose before. Ground down into the right foot and bring the left foot to the inside of the right ankle. We can stay here with our kickstand. We can bring the left foot up to the calf, making sure we keep a soft bend in the right knee. And if you'd like to bring it up a little bit higher, if that's in your practice, bring that left foot up above the knee. So wherever you're working today, find your balance, find something to focus your eyes on. And when you're ready, release the arms and inhale the arms out to the side and up overhead. Lengthening through the fingertips, soft bend in the standing leg. Letting your focal point, your drishti, hold your attention, making sure it's something that isn't moving. And when you're ready, release the arms out to the sides. Release that knee, bring it back to center and step the weight on both feet. Now we can have a little shake again, let the knees shake side to side. Little windmill arms here. And then let's step to the front of the mat if you aren't already there. We'll bring the feet about hip distance apart. Let the arms relax, shoulder blades together and back, lengthen through the crown of the head. Take a deep breath in. And as you exhale, take a big step back with the left foot and lower your hands to the mat. So our first step here is to make sure that we're on two parallel lines. We don't want to be on a tightrope. We'd rather be on railroad tracks. So if there's an adequate distance between your feet, maybe eight or 10 inches left to right, we can walk ourselves up to standing. So bringing one and then both hands up to the front knee. Lengthen through the crown of the head. And once you found your balance, release the fingertips down towards the mat. Take a deep breath in and inhale the arms forward and up. Reaching through the fingertips and the crown and pressing the left heel back in towards the mat. In my tradition, this posture is called Warrior One. You may have learned an alternate version where the heel stays to the mat. That is an option as well, but I will leave the heel up version. Keep reaching through the crown of the head, reaching through the fingertips. Nice deep breath in. And then exhale the hands to the front knee. Take a soft bend in the back foot and then press forward to come to standing at the front of the mat once again. Take a deep breath in. And as you exhale, step the right foot back. Lower the hands to the mat. Check that your feet are wide enough apart so we're on two railroad tracks, not a tightrope. Once you've found that spacing, bring the hands to the front knee, 
Lengthen through the crown of the head and release the fingertips down towards the mat. Take a deep breath in and inhale the arms forward and up. Let the crown of the head reach towards the ceiling, fingertips reach high. Keep pressing into the back heel. Nice deep breaths here. On your next exhale, lower the hands to the front knee. Take a bend in the back foot and press back to the front of the mat. You can bring one hand to the belly and one hand to the heart. Nice deep breathing. Feeling a moment of gratitude for yourself, for taking time for this practice today, for showing up to do something good for your mind and your heart and your body. Releasing the hands down by the sides, grounding down to the feet once again. Take a deep breath in, lengthening through the crown. And then exhale, take a big step back with the left foot. We'll come down to the mat once again with the hands, making sure the feet are on a parallel line before lowering the left heel to the mat. So the left foot will come to a 45 degree angle. And we'll walk our hands back up the front thigh and rotate so that the upper body and the hips face the long edge of the mat. We'll inhale the arms forward and up and take the gaze out over the right fingertips. Notice if one hand is lifting higher than the other. We're working for a parallel lines with your shoulders, so arms extending directly out of the shoulders. For warrior two, Parshvavira Bajasana. See if you can draw the shoulder blades in towards each other at the same time as reaching the fingertips away from the shoulders. This should bring engagement into the arms, into the backs of the arms particularly. If you notice that your hips are tilting in either direction, see if you can square the hips and then keep them rotated towards the long edge of the mat. Just one more breath here. And on your exhale, lower the hands all the way down to the mat. Pivot on the left foot and step all the way to the front. Let's take a moment just to hang here in ragdoll position. Finding a nice gentle bend in the knees. Let the hands rest on the thighs or the calves. Anything that supports you, let the head and the neck hang heavy. Maybe some circles with the head. And then releasing the hands down to the mat once again. Take a big step back with the right foot. We'll look for our parallel lines here before lowering the right heel to the mat. Walk the hands up to the front thigh and then open up to the right side. So the hips are squared to the long edge of the mat once again. I will turn so you can see what I'm doing. And then extend the arms out in line with the shoulders and take the gaze over the left fingertips. Nice deep breaths. 
Notice if you can keep that knee directly over the ankle. Sometimes we have a tendency to shift back. If you can keep it directly over the ankle, it's the most stable that can be for the knee. And also encourages a great strengthening in the thighs. Take a nice deep breath in. And as you exhale, windmill the arms down to the front of the mat. Pivot onto the right big toe and then step forward to the front of the mat. Let the head hang heavy once again. And then gently bend at the knees and pull down with the tailbone to roll up one vertebra at a time. Nice and slowly, letting the head, the neck, the shoulders be the last to lift. You can give yourself a great pat on the back here. We've come through all six postures and you've done a great job. Let's take a deep breath in together, bringing the arms up and overhead, bringing palms together and exhaling hands to heart center. I thank you for sharing your practice with me. Namaste.